Scott Haven, Southern Africa. Uh, it's Alice Hat, that's what we say. I guess we could say that. This is going to talk a little briefly. Oh, sorry about that. Bit of that. Okay. Messed up together here. Pull it together. Okay. We want to talk a little bit about Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Um, there's been a lot said about her. I just want to bring up one thing. She, she just had finished doing her first speech um, uh, as, a, as a congressperson, and uh, it was broadcast on C-SPAN. C-SPAN is the, uh, the entity that was brought about when they had the, um, the cable industry came about, and they made them uh, create a network and pay for it, you know, that, that would be a public service to everybody. Anyway, so they, they broadcast the speech in its entirety, and, uh, but it was the first time, well, it was, uh, it was history, it was historic, I guess, because it was the uh, first speech uh, that the C-SPAN has, like, um, retweeted or whatever, because it, and it was, like, overwhelmingly the most ever, you know, viewed uh, speech, whatever it is. Now, what's more interesting about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's uh, situation is that uh, she started off talking about the air traffic controllers, which was interesting because this whole thing started, if you want to look about it historically, with uh, Ronald Reagan taking, um, uh, doing the do on the air traffic controllers. You know, they were like middle class union, and people wouldn't stand up for them, and so they they went, and a whole lot of under unions followed. Anyway, so she 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 uh, should pick an immigrant that came from that kind of situation and pulls herself up by the bootstrap and all the rest of that stuff that, of course, black people don't do because you know we everything's rigged against us. But we won't get into that right now. That's not what this is about. Anyway. Um, Anyway, he's hails from Yemen, and uh, uh, he worked and became an air traffic controller, got a middle class job, blah, blah, but now he's on suspension because the government's on suspension, and air traffic control is one of them. Let me tell you, it's a very difficult job. And one of the things in the Air Force is one, I think, second or third big whatever, job that, that, that everybody wanted. Maybe they didn't, didn't want it uh, because it messed with your, or they came, or you had swing shifts, so it messed with your internal kind of clock, and also it's just a very stressful job. But those people, if they're not employed, they, hey, things, things could go. You have big problems, let's put it that way. And so she talked about him, how he put the bootstrap, blah, 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 and he's middle class now, but he's he's, in, he's one of those people that's affected, da, 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 da. Okay, great. But I'm really impressed because she's picked Yemen, you know, as a as a, as a kind of thing, because you know we're palming Yemen to death, you know, as, as a proxy, of course, through Saudi Arabia. But it's, it, it, it's like a parallel with it, with uh, um, the same thing we do with um, with the Palestinians, you upon the Palestinians through uh, through Israel as a proxy. Well, that's the way it goes. That's the way politics are. Well, what's more interesting to me about Alexander Castro Cortez and what's happening is that she is weirdly doing the same thing that Donald Trump did in a sort of interesting way. Not the tweet part, but every time somebody comes at her, she knocks them off one by one on Twitter, just to Twitter, just like she did with the, the Democratic and the, the Republican. Um, um, uh, primaries, and when he started going, knocking those cats off one by one by one, to so he was the only person standing, and the media was in love with it at the time. But then, when they realized he was going against Hillary Clinton, then they turned against him. So it was interesting because now the media was his enemy. So he had the enemies; he had made the enemies in the Republican Party, the media, and of course the Democratic Party. Alexander Casa Cortez, interestingly enough, because of the way she came about and knocking off a, a big time, you know, a Democratic guy who was scheduled to be speaker of the house and all the rest of that stuff. Well, she ends up having to battle, you know, he has, she has to battle her own party, because in Democrats are very or corporatist, right? She has to battle she has to battle the media well, no more, get to the media in a second. She has to battle Republicans of course. And uh, now the media. Now interesting enough, the media does, you know, some media are trying to go after her until she's naive, whatever have it. But then when they have to drill down or you know get get to the media and actually say, well maybe she may not be so wrong. She might be so right. The, it's interesting. And then a lot of other people in media pundits or the people that don't know anything, like the like the you know well, the talk show people, whatever they say, they say dumb things, you know. So, so she and she has answered for all of these. She's knocked them off one by one. Everybody sounds like, hey, let's pay attention to her, you know. So, so it's, it's interesting. I mean, um, you can't ignore her. And uh, but like when Trump first came in, I, on these commentaries I give, I said, nah, let me let, let me leave her alone for a while. I think it will, you know. And she'll, she'll everybody else covering her, so you'll be all right. Anyway, this is a little message from me. T from the Patterson State Transit to bed, letting you know what I only suspect.